We're going to be looking at the alkylation of various carbonyl compounds. Uh, in the last lecture, we uh, finished off by looking at alkylation next to ketones, and we're going to come back to that. There's some more um, information that we need to deal with with that, a bit of complication, if you will. Uh, but now, just to, to remind you, we, we've looked at formation of enolates of esters, and uh, we've said that, for instance, it, it's good to use something like... Uh, um, a compatible base like sodium methoxide, which and the reason it's compatible is the negative charge of it here. If it acts as a nucleophile and adds to the carbonyl, pops out, comes back in, we kick out methoxide again. Uh, so we ju just regenerate the ester. But if it acts as a base and picks up the proton, we can get the, the enolate, uh, which looks like this. The problem is, um, in order to using this to generate this enolate over here is actually quite useless and something else is going to happen. And you haven't covered that yet, but remember that this is an equilibrium and the equilibrium actually lies more to the side of the ester. Very little of the enolate is going to be formed. Now, unfortunately, this ester over here is also a very good electrophile and it does something known as a Kleisen condensation, which you will be uh, dealing with uh, later on in, in a later chapter. So at the moment, uh, all we need to understand is that by generating an enolate of an ester, um, we can't generate do this in an equilibrium. Uh, rather, we need to push it all the way over. If we want to do an alkylation at this point, we need to push it all the way over. And so if we take just a standard ester, put an R group over there, we want to push it all the way across uh, to generate the enolate that looks like this. Uh, and so the obvious answer to this is that we need to use a base which is very strong and non-nucleophilic, and our go-to base for that is LDA. Okay, so that's very easy, and we're obviously going to need one equivalent of that. Uh, something else that we can do is that we can make sure that this R group over there is very big, all right? If we make sure that that group over there is big, like, for instance, being a ter tertiary butyl group, okay, with OT butyl, that being very big means that this becomes less electrophilic, or rather it's less susceptible for nucleophiles coming in and doing this sort of reaction that we uh, showed just now. All right, so it's one secret uh, that we can use. So those are the two things that we need if we're wanting to alkylate esters. Okay, so alkylation of acids, and by this we mean carboxylic acids, uh, doing that, or the enolates of carboxylic acids, uh, to do that we need to remember, and this has been covered already, that of course the carboxylic acid proton is the most acidic proton in this molecule. And so if we add one equivalent of base to that, this proton is going to be whipped off first. So we're going to have to add two equivalents of base. But the minute we do that, looking at this whole molecule, actually this nitrogen over here is also fairly acidic because it's next door to a Bock group. Now, I'm not going to tell you what a Bock group is. You need to go and look that up. All right, I want you to go and Google that. Look, look it up, guys. Um, see what a Bock group is and why actually that one is also going to be slightly uh, acidic as well. So in this molecule, adding two equivalents of a strong base, not going to yet generate the enolate. We want to remove the, one of these protons over here. In order to do that, we're going to have to add a third equivalent of a very strong base. And so uh, our go-to base again, LDA, but we want to have three equivalents of, of that. And in so doing, we will then generate a tet, or tri, sorry, a trianion, O minus, O minus, N minus, and the Bock group over there. Go look that up. Uh, and we can then react that with any electrophile. So we'll just choose now uh, benzyl bromide. So benzyl bromide looks like this. Right. And so now this can react. Uh, there's a whole, uh, let's push these electrons in. Those ones go in, come back over there and kick that out, and so we alkylate at that position over there. So our initial product is going to look like this, O minus, N minus, Bock. New bond to the phenyl group uh, over there, the benzene group. All right, and those negative charges will just be protonated once we add uh, some water to 
this uh, reaction once it is finished. Easy enough. Right, so the third one I want to look at, or carbonyl group that we are going to look at, is alkylation of, of aldehydes. And this is the first time that we're going to come across one of the big problems with alkylation of aldehydes. Uh, just like the ester that we, just, we did just now, we're going to later find out that aldehydes themselves are so fantastic at being electrophiles in the reaction that when we try to do this, when we try to form the enolate, that would look like this, all right, this enolate will react with the aldehyde that we have over there. In fact, it's going to happen so quickly <clears throat> and do that type of reaction, and again, you'll cover this in later lectures, uh, this type of reaction over, over there, which is known as an aldol reaction, happens so quickly that we cannot add a strong enough base that takes all of this and deprotonates as quickly as possible to form the, uh, the, the enolate so that it prevents it from self-condensing. And so we come up against what is known as this, the uh, aldehyde problem. And there are two solutions to the, uh, the aldehyde problem that we're going to uh, discuss. And the first one Actually, notionally, there's three. Um, the first one that we're going to look at just in, in this lecture is the, the use of ene amines. So uh, when we introduced all this uh, enolate chemistry, we remember that we can take a carbonyl compound. It could be a ketone. It could be an aldehyde. In this case, because we're dealing with aldehydes, we'll deal with that. And if we add a secondary amine, so I'm just going to choose this one over here, papyridine, and if we take the papyridine in the presence of an acid, we can go through this whole process okay, of forming the enamine. You should be able to do this mechanism. Please make sure that you can, and we get this uh, enamine product out over here. Now, the enamine is a nice stable compound and is not electrophilic at this position anymore. This here, this carbonyl, extremely electrophilic. All right, any nucleophile that is going to want to react with this is going to react over there. However, the enamine, it's not no longer, this position is no longer um, uh, electrophilic, but this position over here is now nucleophilic. But here's the important thing with enamines. This is very important. It's not that nucleophilic. And one of the biggest limitations, uh, uh, one of the, the biggest limitations of, of enamines is that because this is not that nucleophilic, this position, there are only limited uh, electrophiles that will work in this reaction. And the limited uh, electrophiles that will work are things like the um, uh, al allylic halides that are allylic leaving group on it and likewise the benzylic because that's just the aromatic version of that okay halides will work as well and then the third one that works is the alpha uh, chloro um, alpha, alpha ha uh, halo carbonyl compounds all right and then x over there so it'll be chlorine bromine and that sort of thing those are the only ones, they're very reactive electrophiles and the only ones that will work with, with enamines um, in order to, to alkylate them. Because it's not a great uh, nucleophile, the enamine, and so it needs very good electrophiles. If you don't use these ones, one of the other properties of the enamine comes into play. So, for example, uh, if you had to throw in methyl iodide, which is not one of these ones over here, methyl iodide or any other standard alkyl, like a primary leaving group on, on an alkyl halide of some sort, if you throw in something like that, the lone pair of electrons in the nitrogen are the ones that end up being the better nucleophile in this reaction. And so what happens is they will add to the alkylating agent and um, you'll get a nitrogen, uh, in this case, a methyl group being put on over there. And then this can then collapse and we go back to, to the aldehyde. 
um, and we, we, we end up with uh, having done anything. So the only thing that works are these types of groups over there. So let's just look at uh, one example of this. If we take this aldehyde over there and react it with a secondary amine, uh, so we'll just use a slightly different one um, just to add some variety. It almost looks like LDA, it's not LDA. Uh, and obviously, when you know, to form the enamine, we need the acid catalyst uh, present as well. Uh, and so, what's going to happen is we're going to get dum 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 dum. Uh, we're going to enamine, so that, nitrogen, and the bits over there. All right, again, make sure you can do the mechanisms of this, uh, guys. It's very important. Uh, alkylating it, we uh, are just going to use uh, ethyl bromoacetate. Ethyl bromoacetate is this. It's the ethyl ester, and we have a bromine. It's an alpha halo ester, all right, alpha bromo alpha position, alpha bromo ester. Uh, and in order to get this to work, we actually need to, because I said this is a very poor nucleophile, we need to heat this, all right, heat this to reflux, and in this particular case, the uh, um, solvent is acetonitrile, although that's not uh, important just for this example. Um, so we heat that all together, and what we will end up with is uh, this. We now alkylate, so that goes in, this then comes around, kicks out, it's horrible arrows there, kicks out the bromine. Okay, so we've got, this is now aluminium, there, there's our other carbons, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. It's carbon number two that formed the bond to that carbon over there, which then goes to the esters. Notice, guys, that I'm counting out my carbon atoms myself. It's very important to make sure that when you do things like this, that you count your carbons very, very easily, or very, very, very carefully at least. Um, and this over here, uh, on workup, we'll then uh, uh, hydrolyze this with some water, uh, and we're going to go back to, to the aldehyde. All right, so that's the aluminium. We're just going to hydrolyze that. Again, make sure that you can do a mechanism like this. All right, this is important that you, uh, um, you, you, you're not being confounded by what should be uh, very basic mechanisms that you should understand now at third year, third year level, OET. All right, overall, what have we done? This bond here, all right, we've basically added to that position over there. Um, but we couldn't do it directly. We couldn't form the enolate and react with that because the aldehyde was going to self-condense. So we needed to form the enamine. And, and that is the, um, an important way uh, of, of doing that. All right.